Hi. So uh, I'm going to make a video today going through the initial steps of setting up a WordPress website using Oxygen as the page builder. Um, this video is done by is being done by request from a friend of mine who is um, make, is is, ta is thinking about making the move over from their current page builder to the Oxygen, and she just wanted to get a basic overview of everything that goes into it. Now, normally, I don't go through these steps each time I build a website. Um, I have a starter site. I've already gone through all of these steps. I keep it on my local drive, and when I'm starting up a new project, I just clone it and start working from there. All my plugins, everything is set, and uh, and it's good to go. So, but in this case, I'm going to show the process I went through to build that starter site. So let's um, let's get started on that. So this here is just a, a clean install of WordPress. Nothing has been added to it yet. I'm working on my local drive uh, using uh, local by flywheel. All right, so the first thing I, I will do is um, because oxygen, you don't, it disables the theme. You don't need to have a theme at all, but you do, but the theme does still stay there. You can't delete all of the themes, but the uh, clean install of, of, of uh, WordPress does come with three themes already installed. And um, and as you go on, these themes, you know, I've built Oxygen sites and I get messages that the theme needs to be updated, even though it's not being activated. So um, I just like to get rid of them, just keep one that I have to, and then get rid of the others. Um, so I'm just gonna delete this one and this one. And um, to be honest, I have never tried to delete this theme here. I don't think it can. Even after I have Oxygen installed, I don't think it can. So it's there um, and I'll just keep updating it. But better just to have to update one than three. All right, so the first step I'm going to do is, all right, is, okay, so we did that. So the next step, I'm looking at a list I got here. Um, I'm gonna go into install the Oxygen plugin. So we will go to add new. And as soon as that comes up, I will upload the plugin that I have on my desktop or on my hard drive. And let's see, plugins, oxygen. And I just wanna make sure I'm getting the latest one and that's it right there. Click install. Let me move this over here for now. And once this installs, let's see, installing plugin from uploaded file Let's activate plugin. Okay, so when you activate the plugin, you're going to get this screen right here, and you have two options. You can um, install a ready-made, pre-made website with all of your sections and built, or you can do a blank install. In this case, I'm going to go for a blank install, and that. But this option is there if you're if you have if you know that there's a template in there that you just want to use but we're gonna go for the blank install right now. And we're going to put in the license and I'm gonna go grab my license and I will be right back. I'm gonna pause the video while I do that. Great, so I got that license in there. And so what I'm gonna do is do a, a, just a quick tour of what the uh, default workspace looks like in Oxygen. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create our first template and we're going to call this main template. And there's a couple of different ways you can assign this template. But for your main template, there's going to be your header and your footer. You're going to want this to be on every page uh, of the website to begin with, pages and posts. And um, we can change that um, as we go. Uh, we, can, we can modify that as we go. We can customize it, things like that. So what you want to do with this one is you want to uh, click on catch all. And that just puts it everywhere. Um, and like I said, if you create a different template and you want it to override this template, you can do that by, by changing the settings. But to start, that's the way we're gonna do that. So we hit publish, edit with oxygen. And this will take us to the workspace. Sometimes this takes a minute to load, but oftentimes not. But this is it. So you can see the colors. And what I want to point out to you, because as I install other plugins, this workspace is going to change a little bit. So one of the things about this right now is everything is kind of like this light gray. Um, when you start adding things, you're going to get, you know, the contrast isn't going to be very high. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a section and you don't have any key commands with oxygen out of the box. So um, 
So you got to do everything manually. So we do add, and the first thing you want to do is add a section. Then the second thing is add inner content. And that's going to just display what's ever on the page that is being currently pulled in. And you can choose that by choose your preview or change your preview here. So you got the front page or you could go whatever whatever else you have installed on, on your page on your website. All right. So that's what that's pulling in right now. So you can't edit this. You can't touch this. Um, all right. So now we're going to add another section and that's going to be our footer. So what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to just rename these because I like to, you know, as you're building these sites and this uh, structure panel starts to get filled with divs and sections and you, keeping these things named uh, well is going, whoops, I hit save by accident. Keeping these things uh, clearly named is going to save you a lot of time and headache. All right. So we're going to call this one header and this one footer. Again, call that whatever you want. All right, so all right, so just to point out a few things. So this is your structure panel. So as you build your your page, this will start to fill up with sections. And then, like say for example, if I was going to put a div inside of here, come over here, type in div, just click it, and it appears. You don't have to drag and drop. You just click a, whatever uh, section or div you have highlighted. That's where the the element will be added to. So now you'll see you get this little plus sign here. That means that this section contains something. In this case, it's a div. So it, it titles that div, and then you can come in here and rename it. Um, but otherwise, you got that. And you know you can move these things around. So like, say, if I was going to have another div in here, let's say I duplicated this one, and I want number five to be on top, you can just get that little um, four arrow, four pointed arrow, click on it, and you can just drag it up there and move it around like that. And if you put elements inside there, same thing. All right. And then on this side over here, this is where all of your settings are going to be on the left hand side. So um, and this is basically uh, all Flexbox. If you understand CSS Flexbox, that's basically what all of this stuff is calling out here. So vertical alignment, horizontal alignment, and then obviously grid is not Flexbox, but that's in there. But these main elements over here are going to be creating the, the, the layout using Flexbox. And you can get a better understanding of that over here because you know you have two places that you can do this. If you come over to advanced and come to layout, then you'll see like if I was to do flex and then column and then come back over here, you'll see this is now selected as vertical. Okay. And if I was going to go back in here, say column center, if I come back over here now, you'll see this has been highlighted as center. So that's what that's doing over there. And then, you know, I can always just come back in here and get rid of that. And let's see why that didn't work. Okay, so if I got this, so let's unselect that, let's unselect that and unselect that. And now it's back to the default settings. All right, and this over here, if you click in on this and scroll down, you'll see these are the different breakpoints. So all devices and then um, whatever this one is, 1120 less than 992 and then so on so as you're building your page you, you know as, as you're doing the responsive elements this is where you'll come and do that and so and each one of these is you know you're going to be setting your, your settings here same way as you would if it was i'm sure this works just like every other page builder um same concept works differently but it's the same concept all right so that is the default oxygen workspace all right so the next step i want to do is i'm going to install a plugin called hydrogen pack and what this is going to do is going to enhance this environment for me it's going to make my my workflow uh, a little bit smoother a little bit faster and i can customize certain things and it's also going to give me key commands which helps to speed up the uh the development process um yeah i wouldn't know i wouldn't know what to do without those key commands once you get them in there all right so let's uh save this we're going to go to the uh, the front end here, and we're going to go to install plugins again. You know, all right. So add new, upload, choose, and we're going to go to my premium plugins, and we're going to look for hydrogen pack. Here it is. We can install that, and then I will uh, enter in the. Um, license key for that. So while I do that, I'm going to put the video on pause. Okay, so I got hydrogen pack installed and activated. And so it gives you this little menu item here on the left. 
and when you click on that you will see all the different features that you can enable or disable so this is what's enabled by default and i more or less leave this alone um what do i do okay so what i do is i do auto regenerate css cache on save which is something you have to do with oxygen anyway every once in a while as you're you know updating and your, your CSS and adding classes, you're gonna have to regenerate the CSS anyway. So this does it every time you hit save, it does that automatically in the back end. you don't even know what's going on. So you can see this little tag up here. It's saying that the CSS breakpoints have changed and you need to regenerate the cache. So I will do that right now. And there it is, it's done automatically. So let's go back to hydrogen pack and regenerate on save. So I'm gonna do that. And the other thing I'm going to do is create a shortcut. So these are all the shortcuts that are activated by default. And all of them great. I don't deactivate any of them, but I do activate add icon. And I like to do that. And what it is is control I is going to insert the icon widget into whatever element I'm in at that time. Um, so we already got shift I to add an image icon adding divs, adding columns, buttons, sections, things like that. These all come in real handy. Um, I haven't really messed around with any of these other things yet. I mean, I, we could do delete, but um, I, I, I'm not going to do that. And so this so far has been working well for me, and I'm going to just leave it like that. Okay, so now we're going to do save changes. And let me just check my list here to make sure I'm on track. Okay, all right, so that's it. So that's all we do for that. Now I'm going to install another plugin and this one is called Swiss knife so we're gonna go back to plugins add new and Swiss knife is just basically a complementary plugin to hydrogen pack it, it, it does a few things that hydrogen pack doesn't do and I'll point those out to you in a second let me get that plugin in here and let's go to my premium plugins and look for Swiss knife is right here make sure I got the latest version and I do, I'm gonna install that. And while I install the, the license key, I'm just gonna pause the video for a second. Okay, so now I have Swiss Knife installed and you'll see pretty much the same thing we saw in Hydrogen Pack, just what you can add, activate. So I, this comes default, nothing is activated uh, except for the dark theme. And I'll show you what that is in a second when we go back into the Oxygen Editor. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just do Oxygen Template List in the admin bar so I'm going to activate that, and then I'm going to activate um, breakpoints, uh, expanded breakpoints. Here it is, and I'll show you what that means when we go back to the editor, which we're going to go do right now. Okay, and just checking my list here again real quick. All right, so everything is saved. So now if I refresh this page, I got this in the admin bar now. And what this does is just shortcuts to the different templates that I make. And as you're building a site and creating more and more templates this just eliminates some steps you know so everything is just about eliminating steps um or or making shortcuts so that you can just get to things quicker and get your site built a little bit faster all right so let's go check out our template again and you'll see a difference right away in the editor and uh, the main one is going to be just the, the color well, it's not color but it's taking those, those gray colors that were there that were kind of light and faded and it's just creating a nice uh, more contrast and it's just easier to see it makes things a little bit easier to navigate around so you can see right away how much darker this is if I open up the structure panel you'll see now we have icons in here in, in front of the the uh, the name of the section or the div so um, so the divs are just going to be these squares but if I was to add like a header in here and now that I got my keyboard shortcuts because of hydrogen I'm going to just do shift H and it drops a header in there and you'll see if we get this plus sign that tells me there's something in that div when I open that up, you see that has an H icon. And this is little things, you know, it just makes recognizing and identifying and finding things a lot quicker as long with naming these things. All right, so now if I come back up to this div and I hit Shift T, it's gonna put a text element in there and you see the difference in the icons, okay? If I was to put an image element in there, you see the icon. Um, now if I could do the icon image, uh, we get the little icon, the little heart there. All right, so that's what that did and uh, that, was um, from the hydrogen pack. And what I'm getting from Swiss Knife is this crisp, um, darker, more contrast uh, work environment. And the other thing, the other key thing that I'm getting from uh, the Swiss Knife in this environment here is now if you look at the breakpoints, I got them all visible. It's eliminating one step. 
I don't have to click, select, and click, whereas it's just limiting two, two steps. I see it all here, and when I hover over it, it, it gives me this little tool tip when I know what um, what breakpoints I'm looking at, what my screen widths are going to be at each one of these things right here. To me, that was worth the Swiss knife. If, if Swiss knife did nothing else for me and that's all it did, I'm in. Great. So, uh, all right, so we got that. And uh, let's see what else. Okay, so we're that's that's we're, we're pretty good with the plugins right now. I got one more plugin to install, but the next plugin that I'm going to install is um, it's called Oxy Ninja. And what Oxy Ninja is is a, is a CSS framework. So what it's going to do is going to install a list of classes. I think there's about 400 of them in there. And what that does is speeds up the building process in the sense that it's they're basically utility classes. I don't need to create classes they're all there all i need to, you know i have a little cheat sheet that i see what all my classes are but now that i've been using it for a while i don't really need to use a cheat sheet so much and once you get a feel for it you kind of can guess what might be there what might not be there and you just and, and the great thing is you just have to start up here like where you're adding classes let's see if i was selected here if i was going to add a class if i just started typing in it it's, it's a great search feature. It, it recognizes what you're typing, and it'll give you a list of possible matches. And um, and I'll show you what that what that looks like once I install it. And while I'm over here, why don't I do this? I'm going to go into settings, editor settings, and then class suggestions limit. Right now it's set to five. I'm going to bump that up to 15. That's the number I like to work with. So now we'll hit save on that. Um, let me just double check my list here to make sure I'm getting everything covered. So we installed the Swiss knife. Uh, we got the template, showed you the breakpoints, things like that. Okay, so, um, all right, but before I install um, this next plugin, what I do is I, I want to set up my, um, hold on a second. It's hard to think, it's hard to talk, think, and, and act at the same time. So sometimes I need to just stop talking for a second. All right, so I want to set up my global settings. And this is where I set up, uh, there, there's global settings you can add here, and if you use what's called a clamp function, it's a CSS function, you can add here in the global settings for fonts and for padding once, and it's automatically responsive. Okay, but the first thing before I start doing that, um, I'm going to go to style sheets, uncategorized. I want to add a style sheet, and we're going to just call this default. Okay. All right, so now what I have over here is a boilerplate CSS that I use on every website that I, I build, okay? And um, this is on my starter site, so every time I clone that site, everything is in there and it stays there. All right, so the first thing is this HTML um, CSS, and it's saying font size, it's 62.25%. So your base font on the browsers, the way they display your base font is at, at 16 points. This breaks it down. So 62.25% shrinks that down to about 10 points, 10 pixels. And that helps because when I am setting up my padding and my margins, I use rem and rem is multiple of 10. So it's easier to um, set things up that way. So if I put in two rem, I know that's gonna be 20 pixels. So I put that in there and this one right here, BR, it's for breakpoints. And what I'm doing is I'm adding a little margin below every paragraph. Um, and I can, I can come in here and I can adjust this if I need to, if I want to. Um, it, it's just a personal preference that I use. So every time you hit a return, you're going to get a consistent automatic space in between your, your paragraphs. Um, this owl space in here, this is something I learned from a guy that has a, a channel, a YouTube channel called Digital Ambition. And he has a video on there about owl spacing. And he explains how in real depth, you know, I'm not going to go into that here. Um, if, if you want to learn more about that, just go check that out. Uh, digital ambition. So um, what this does is this creates consistent spacing between elements that you put within a div. So you apply this class to the parent div, the wrapper div, and then every element you add in there, what this is going to do is going to give you a margin top of two rem. But this feature right here, this little star, the plus sign and the star, what that does is that it's going to give that margin to the top only to elements that are a sibling of something. So in other words, the top element in that card is not going to get the margin applied to the top of it. Okay. And, and what that does for you is that whatever padding you have on that card, let's just say you have 20 pixels of padding on that card. Um, it's not going to give you an additional 
20 pixels on that top element because it's not going to apply it to that top element. So you get 20 pixels of padding on the bottom and on the top. And then every element in there is going to add that uh, whatever setting you put in there. In this case, it's 20, um, 2 gram, 20 pixels on top of everything. So I dropped that in there too. Um, and then this is just a max utility classes. So this is just for max width. Um, it just, I, I don't really use this too much, but again, I learned this. I learned a lot of stuff from the digital ambition, um, web, uh, YouTube channel. And this was a video he did in there. So I just throw that in there and I'll use it sometimes, but, um, I do get, I, I do find myself, um, doing these myself, customizing these myself because, you know, as good as these are, um, sometimes it's just easier and quicker for me to do it on my own. And I'll show you how I do that. And this right here, I don't use this. This is just for one particular job I was working on. So I just take all of this, copy all of this, and I paste it in here. And that is that. So that does everything I needed to do. I got my HTML. And here's another feature that I like to add. So down here, where it says editor theme, if I click on that and I choose Dracula, it gives me a nice higher contrast. A lot easier to see everything works out fine okay so now i got that in there i'm going to just save that now let's go back to uh, my settings and we're going to go to global settings and i'm already in global settings right here okay and we're going to do headings now you see by default all the h tags are set up with pixels so 36 for the h2 30 and so on down the line all right so in order to make this responsive right off the bat, I come in here and I decide whatever my H1 is going to be. So this is an H1 right here. And let's say I want my H1 to be 60 pixels. Okay. And oh, not six dash, 60. Thought that looked a little small. All right. So we got 60 pixels there. But if I was to just leave it like this and then go start building my website, and I'm building a page, I put an H1, it comes in at 60 pixels, and then I come over here and I wanna check out you know, different screen sizes. It's gonna be 60 pixels all the way across the board, down on the phone. And on the phone, it's gonna be way too big for that. So this is something that I also learned from the Digital Ambition um, YouTube channel, is this calculator here. And what this does is it creates a clamp function and it gives you a range of sizes so you set a max size and you set a min size and then down here you're setting the viewport and the max max and minimum so 32 32 times 10 320 128 1280 is going to be the max and it uses that number to and i don't know how it works i don't need to know how it works frankly i don't really care as long as it works and it works and it works really really well so let's say i want my maximum font h1 to be 60 and i want my minimum to be 48 so 4.8 4.8 times 10 okay and then it creates this calculation down here and all i got to do is just copy this part i don't need to copy any of that other stuff just this part here right up to that semicolon don't copy the semicolon copy that come in here and instead of leaving it on pixels this is a great thing about oxygen you have the option of choosing none and you see the font, you know, the, the H1 just shrunk down to 10 pixels in this case. So highlight that and just paste in that whole clamp function. And it just went gigantic, didn't it? Okay, um, let's figure out why that happened. Oh, you know why? I know exactly why that happened. <laughs> um, I typed in 60 and not 6. Okay, so yeah, sometimes, you know, you got to keep telling yourself it's 6 actually means 60 so um like i said talking thinking and doing at the same time leads to stuff like that so when i drop that in there now we're down to 60 and uh do my line height at 1.2 now if i duplicate this and i'll make this an h2 and it's going to take on this and i'll just go through this and do all of these so I'm just gonna make stuff up as I go along. So let's just say this will be 4.8 at the max. And let's just say um, 3.8 at the minimum. It creates the calculation here. Do the same thing and go through all of that and do that. Come back over here. Make sure that you go to none, paste it in, okay? 
And the line height, I believe, will just cascade down. But just in case it doesn't, I'll just put that in there. Um, now for the H3, let's just make something up again. So let's say H3 is uh, 3.8, and it goes down to 3.2. Let it do its calculation. Once that's done, select all of this up to the semicolon, but not including the semicolon. Copy that. Come over to my H3, hit none, drop that in there. And what I'll do is I will duplicate this one, and I'll give that an H3. And there you go. And now this is going to be completely responsive. One thing I want to check and make sure that I did was my my uh, screen width. And right now it's at 1120, but I want it to be at 1280. Okay, so we're going to save that. And now I'm going to show you how this looks in real time. Okay, so I have this little um, Chrome browser extension called What the Font. If I click on it, and no matter wherever I hover over, it's going to give me the font. So if I hover over it, it's telling me that's Source Sans Pro. And then if I click on it, it's going to give me the size, which is 60. Now, if I take my screen and shrink my screen down to here, let's get that out of the way, and come over here, it's down to 50. And the reason why it's not going down to 48 is because my my browser does not squeeze down to uh, 320 pixels. I don't know what it is at this point, but that's as, as small as it'll go. But if I was able to go down to 320, then that would show 48. But that's it. That's it. It's responsive right off the bat. Don't have to do anything else. And so now I can just build and not worry about that. It saves time. You probably saves a couple of hours over a full website build. And the beauty of this is I can also do this with... Um, Sections and columns. So my section, the height and width, or the padding on the top and the bottom, do the same thing. So in this case, it's saying 75 pixels. And let, let's get rid of this image here. It's just getting in the way. Let's delete that, and let's get rid of the icon as well. And let's get rid of this div. All right, so I got 75 pixels here, top and bottom. And it's going to stay 75 pixels no matter what screen size I'm at. But in the real world, as you're looking at it, you know, 120 pixels top and bottom of, of padding on a you know big screen is probably going to be fine but when you get down to a phone you're not going to want it to be that big and again you could go through every uh screen size and and do all of this um but uh but this eliminates having to do that saves time again i think you know over you know for the large website build this is going to save you hours so what you do come over to settings and I'm in my global styles in my sections and columns right here. So again, so let's say we want this to be 120 pixels max. So come over here, do max 120 and minimum, let's say 70, let's say 75 or let's say 70. Okay. And it's creating the calculation down here and do the same thing. Same thing as you did with the fonts. Copy. Come over here. And again, you got to make sure that you go to none, drop that in there. And here on the bottom, drop that in there. I got to go to none. That's why it's not working. And there we go. So now I got 120 on the top, 120 on the bottom. And if I was to go down to the phone, you're going to see that's quite a bit less than um, what's, what's our 479. So that's not going to quite be at 75 because we're not down at the 320 uh, minimum uh, screen width. But you can obviously see how much smaller that is right there. All right. The other thing I do is I like to just zero this out. Don't like to have any padding there at all. Um, I mean, that's Mart. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I want to zero this out, too. I don't want to have any padding. I want to be able to do this with classes as I'm building the site. Okay. So we're going to just leave that alone. And so this is for the container and this is for the columns padding. All right. So, so there we are. We're done with that. And... Um, the other thing you can do for global settings is in colors. And the only thing I would recommend on this is when you're creating your global colors, don't name it red. Don't name it what the color is. Let's just call this first one primary. Wait, I'm adding a new color set. I don't want to add a new color set. Forget that. I want to uh, come to global colors and just add a new color. So we're going to call primary and just give it a color. Give it some red it doesn't matter at this point add that color and then you can say um 
primary, uh, let's say you could call it alt or hover. Um, sometimes I like to say alternate, A-L-T. And we're going to do that same red color, but maybe we'll just change change it a little bit. Just so, you know, so if we're doing a hover, let's maybe make it a little bit lighter. I think that'll work. And activate that. So color value is not defined. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then you can say uh, secondary. And we'll give this, you know, maybe it doesn't matter. You know, for our sake here, it doesn't really matter what we do. So let's... Give it like a gray color, something like that. So that's our secondary color. Add that, and so on. Okay, but the, the point is, you don't want to uh, give it a specific color, especially you know, because if this becomes the starter site and I save it and start a new project, you know, the colors are never going to match up. Um, and then if you're working on a project with a client and maybe the branding color changes or something changes and they need to change the color, all you got to do is come in here, update this color, and it will site wide update. Um, and that's it. So that's for that. And uh, so now the next thing that I want to do is um, add this Oxy Ninja and show you where all of the uh, all these utility classes come in with Oxy, Nin Oxy Ninja. Really, this one was really a game changer for me. I mean, because not only what I got from Oxy Ninja as far as just helping me build my sites, but also um, the idea or the mindset shift that it gave that it, that it helped me come to is as far as setting up classes and how to set up classes and then you know so i'll use this oxy ninja as my base but i will continue to add my own custom ones there and and i it also helped me with like my naming convention and how i name my classes organize my classes things like that and and find them real quick and easy all right so we're going to come over here back to the front end and we're going to install the oxy ninja plugin so plugin add new Gonna upload the plugin. Let's go to my premium plugins and Oxy Ninjas right here. I will install that. And while that's installing, I'm gonna pause the video, go get the license key and get this all set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got Oxy Ninja activated and the license installed or the license activated. And um, there's two steps you gotta do. Well, you don't have to do the second one, I don't think, but I've always done it is your you have to come over here to library and do enable third party design sets and then you're adding the uh the design sets that come with core um it's nice to have uh i i've never used one i mean i've used them if i'm just like uh playing around with stuff and i just need to get something in there real quick to try to you know work on a feature or work on some other design element or or function element um so that's it so that's it so we're all good to go and uh let's see Let's go back to our template and I will show you what's going on now. Okay. So when you first install Oxy Ninja, you're gonna get this window and it just says, do you wanna import selectors and style sheets for core? Yes, you do. Okay, and then this lock core framework classes and that that you can lock and unlock on the fly and I'll show you how that works. So you just say yes, please. And at this point, all selectors and style sheets are imported. Okay, now you get this little icon up here. And uh, so if you come over here now and you go to style sheets, you're going to see we got core CSS grid and core carousels okay so these are just um these are just some of what it imports and this is for you know obviously their, their carousel uh, feature that they they have in their plugin now and then css grid so these are all the css grid classes so you can build out really complicated grids by just adding these classes to elements in your in your design um it's not as critical as it used to be because uh Oxygen itself has a, a grid feature built into it right now. Um, but I, I talked to some people and they still like doing it this way. They have been doing it this way for a while. Um, a lot more comfortable in CSS and, and they just throw it together that way. So that's there if you need it, if you want it. And now if you come over here to selectors, you'll see now you've got core over here. So these are all the selectors you create that come in here under uncategorized. And then you got all of the core selectors that were just added by Oxy Ninja. And you'll see they're all here. So you got 
Every one of them is going to start with a C dash, and that's just to um, differentiate it from any other class that you might create. And I've gotten into the habit, and this is what I mean about working with Ninja, how it's created a, a mindset and, and, and um, just a, a, a method when I'm building my own classes. I, I want to differentiate the classes I create from the ones in core. So if I'm working on a site that's called, you know, website.com, I'll do W dash and then give it its name. Um, and that just helps me to differentiate it. So, so here we got C dash BTN for button dash main. So this is going to create the style for all of your buttons. Okay. And, um, you got C H so C dash H six. So this is your H six styles in here. Um, you get text dark. So it's going to, so core also, um, added a, um, whoops, let me close that settings so global styles and if you come into colors now you have core a core color palette in here too and you can see how they named everything again they didn't name it a color they just gave it a generic name that indicates what that color where that color lies in the hierarchy so you have accent accent two then you have background light and so on so this is a good idea to come in here and, and, and study this and, and look at this and get some ideas for yourself when you're creating your own color palette, your, your own custom color palette. Um, and if you're using Oxy Ninja, you could actually come in here and if you want to use this palette, you can update this palette. You can customize this palette to whatever you want. So like I can change this to, uh, I don't know, let's, let's find a, a color. Let's do... Um, I don't know. Um, my mind's out of blank. Let's just go with, uh, let's just change it to black. And it changes to black. So now, if I'm coming over here and I'm using, um, not style sheet, but selectors, if I'm using a selector and I create and I find the, the, the class that says uh, background color, it'll be C dash BG dash accent, it's going to give that color. That's the color it's going to put in. So it's going to bring in that black. Okay. So let's, go back to settings. Let's get this back to what it was. Okay. Um, and that's it. That's, that's pretty much, I'm good to go now. I mean, this is, this is a good starting point right here. I can start building a, a website right now and it'll be great. I got everything I need. Um, obviously every project has its own specific needs. So, you know, I have advanced custom fields, custom post types. This is the other plugin that I use uh, quite a bit. Um, there is one other Oxygen plugin that I do use, and it's called um, Oxy Extras. And you know what? How much time do we got on this thing so far? You know, what? let me do this real quick. I want to show you this one. It's called Oxy Extras. It's and what this one does, it doesn't add functionality to the back end like this. But what it does is it gives you design elements uh, or um, feature elements like sliders, mega menus, uh, light boxes, things like that. And I use this one a lot. I use this one on just about every project. Um, let's see, let's get this one installed. Let's go to plugins, add new. And the, and the cool thing about Oxygen so far is, or and, and the, unit, the Oxygen universe, all of these plugins at this moment are on lifetime deals. I haven't bought anything that I need to uh, do a yearly update on. Um, pretty sure that's gonna change. At some point it's gonna change as, as it gets more popular. I'm talking to more and more people who are coming over to Oxygen, so I, I imagine it's going to change. Okay, so we're going to install this plugin, and then I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, the license and activate this thing. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got Oxy Extras installed, and I got the license activated. And you'll find Oxy Extras just you know when you hover over Oxygen, it now just becomes part of the menu here. So click on Oxy Extras, and these are all the elements that. By default, none of them are active. You just activate the ones that you need and go from there. So I'll show you on this page over here, a list of some of the things that they have. Um, and this is, and the list is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, in the four months I've been using it, at least five or six new items have been added to this. Um, cart counter, carousel builder. This one I use quite a bit. Um, let's see what else. Copyright year, if you want that, it makes it nice and easy to get that in there. Although I usually just do that one with code. Um, Fluent Forms. This one I use. Fluent Forms is the, the form plugin that I use on all of my sites. And this gives you a, a widget to, to do some styling right there in the editor. Um, 
it's there's still some limitations to it so there is uh, quite a few cases where i still do need to go in there and write css to get the form styled just right but if it's just a basic form this is it that's all you're going to need um header search so you get a nice search bar in there hot spots and popovers light box um off canvas mega menu um i use the mega i haven't used the mega menu yet but i've been wanting to use the mega menu i want to get in there and, and play around with it a little bit let's see what else uh the pro accordion i use this one quite a bit this one's nice and it's got a dynamic element to it as well so it works really well with advanced custom fields um and you know the repeater element of advanced custom fields i mean so if you're creating like a, a q a section um makes it really easy if, if i'm handing the site off to a client and they have six q a's but all of a sudden they want to add three more they don't have to bother going into the editor they just go into their um, um the, the, into the into the um <laughs> into the oh wow the dashboard i've been talking for a while maybe i probably need a sip of water here they just go into the editor the gutenberg editor and just click add element and it just automatically gets updated on the front end they never have to touch oxygen um i've done that quite a few times and that works out really really well uh read more read less is a cool feature um social share toggle switch i just used this recently this one is really nice and uh table of contents is nice um saves you time i mean you could easily build a table of contents on your own but it's all about saving time the more websites you can get built the better all right so um so that's it that's that so um so i'm not going to activate any of these because i'm not going to go through any of these right now but it's just you know now you know it's there and um and i think that's it i think that's where we're going to stop this and um that's how I set up my, um, my, my starter site in Oxygen. And that's all, everything from there. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or reach out to me. Um, I'm on Facebook and, um, and great, hope this helped. Thank you.